kind of walk with God for a little while, but then at 14. So at 14 years old to 18, got rebellious. New parents that have kids, I, I guess that's the years, right? And I started getting arrested, doing drugs, you know, ecstasy, just all the drugs, sleeping around, doing stuff that's very normal today for kids. Well, let me say this, normal because it happens a lot, but not normal because you're supposed to do it. It's just one. Because some of the things, I know, I know some thinking, hey, well, yeah, okay, see, it's normal. <laughs> just want to clarify that. I, I, I agree with you. So uh, getting arrested, doing, doing stuff. You know what I mean? That, that was definitely leading me down not only the road to hell, but to destroy my life. You know, I didn't have a father. I, I never met my real dad. He was 17. My mom was 16. She ran away from him. Never met him. And like many of you guys probably, don't have a father, don't have a, fa a parent figure. And I was raising myself on the streets with the kids, you know? Tell us about some what you got arrested for. And it's, it's a target stuff. Mm -hmm. Well... My, my friend at 14 years old, he taught me how to steal, so we went into Target in uh, Balboa there. And they used to, I don't know if they do now, but they used to have these uh, pistols, these like pellet gun pistols. Not a Glock, just like a, a pellet gun. <laughs> Put a little CO2 <laughs> tank in there, cartridge, and we decided to take the thing out of the thing and put it in our pants and walk out, but got arrested and ended up doing a bunch of community service and then stole wood for a ramp, got a felony for that. And then uh, got arrested for pulling a gun on someone later. And, you know, all that. Before I was 18, so you can't find any of those records. They're gone, <laughs> which is good. So tell us, leading up to you getting saved, what was your life like right, right before you got saved? And then how did you finally give your life back to the Lord? Well, believe it or not, the last time I got arrested was at 17. I was waving the gun out the window, driving home from school. At the time, I was going to Mission Bay. And, uh, some, you know, we were waving at our friends in the other car. But some other car pulled alongside of me, and they're like, you know, they wrote down my license number. Within like minutes, I pulled into my my house, and I was putting my surfboard on the top of the car. And cops had parked all around the neighborhood and snuck up on me, pointing the gun in my head, freeze, freaking out. And I was such a cocky kid. I'm just like, what? I wouldn't put my hands up. And in case that happened, I put the pillow under uh, the gun under the pillow in my uh, house, and then I like, get the gun. So, anyways, I'm walking down to the beach after that because the people dropped dropped the charges because they said it was an Uzi and it wasn't. It was just a little, another pellet gun. <laughs> and I'm walking on the beach at La Jolla Shores and I felt, I thought in my head, if I could be or do anything or have one wish in my life, what would it be? And for some reason, in my mind, I said, I, I want to know that I'm right with God. You know what I mean? My mom had raised me to know Jesus and I had fallen away. And what I didn't know that that was a prayer. You know what I mean? God had heard that in my mind. I want to be right with God. You know? mm -hmm. Some of y'all in here have had or been involved in some way to have an abortion, runaway, drugs, stealing, uh, being arrested, what have you. And the devil has probably told you you're no good, you're a failure, God hates you. And you're going to hear stories today. This is the only halfway through the first one. And you're going to realize that God, all that stuff is true, that it's wrong. But it doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. And it doesn't mean that God doesn't want to reclaim you to himself. Uh, in our society today, you're hearing a lot about Christians judging people. And what you have to understand is that sin is sin. Calling sin, sin is not judging someone. You're just naming it like you see it because it is. And everything he's describing to you uh, that is sin, it is sin. It's different than saying he's a bad person or, or he's going to hell. Now, if he rejects Christ and he, doesn't, and, and he dies without being forgiven, yes. But, but, but the difference is what someone does and who they are are two different things. And the whole time he was doing that, God was like, you know, your time's coming. And luckily he did eventually give his life to the Lord as you're here in a minute. But some of y'all have been where or you may be where he was. God loves you. Don't try to convince yourself you're not that bad or, or what you're doing is not bad because it is. And it can ruin your life. Just go to prison. There's a bunch of people who tell you what I did got me in jail. But it doesn't mean that God won't reclaim you and forgive you. And that's the important message I hope you hear today is that he loves you and wants to do something way beyond. Because this is the kid that many people then said, that guy's going nowhere. And he wasn't until Christ got in his life. But Christ got in his life. And so I, I, I want to give that hope to you that God wants to do something amazing in your life. So let's talk about when you got saved. So I was surfing for Rusty at the time and DC and stuff. And uh, one of the surfboard shapers at Rusty was a Christian, JC, for JC Surfboards. And um, he invited me 
to a Bible study. He lived across the street from La Jolla High. And I, I, at the time, I was going to La Jolla High School. I was poor, but I was renting uh, rich friends' garages for 100 bucks a month. I had a powder blue gremlin. You guys ever seen a gremlin car before? Old school. I hotwired it. How many of y'all never seen a gremlin? <laughs> $300 I bought the car for. So, you know, these rich kids are pulling other BMWs and I had the gremlin, but the chicks liked it, so it was good. It was cool. It was different. It was different. So you thought. I thought, yeah. <laughs> but uh, he invited me to this Bible study and I went over there and he started reading the Word of God and all the stuff my mom had taught me, all the things I'd learned about the Bible, it all came back. It all hit me. Wow, you know, what am I doing? And that night, I gave my life to Jesus Christ, and I never went back. It's been 18 years. So. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> now you're teaching the Bible study in that same area to those same kids that were like you. Tell them about that, because this is something that y'all can be involved in. So 15 years later, Lord built me up, my friend Peter King, he, uh, he was running a little Bible study down the street from La Jolla. A little church there was letting us use the building. Had like eight adults for a long time, and he asked me, you know, I, we need someone to come and teach the Bible. We want to just come and have the Bible. I'll do the worship part. So went in there. First month, you know, had like six, eight people or whatever. And all of a sudden, within two, three months, these kids started coming from all around the neighborhood. We had, within two, three months, 30 kids that right there, I said, hey, listen, you guys need to get saved, give your lives to Jesus Christ, and one by one, they were getting saved. Each week, it was just growing, you know. It's been, now it's 30 to 50 kids sometimes, and it's been amazing, and then their parents would start to come, because they're, you know, they didn't raise their kids in church, they're like, you know, what kind of cult is this, you know? <laughs> and uh, they knew Peter and I, but they're like, suspicious, why does my kid want to go to church, right? And so the parents would come, and God would tell me, ready? Let's go get them. i give them the gospel, and they, the parents were getting saved. So now we have a mixed group of parents and kids there, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been two years, and, and, and they're just doing amazing. And some of our kids, like uh, uh, one of the kids, Patrick and Luke, they got saved there. They just went on a missions trip to, to Africa, hmm. came back living in the dirt for two weeks, right? Come back, tell the other kids what? We're brats, <laughs> you know what I mean? We need, we need God with a new perspective, and the fire is continuing to spread. It happened to me, and now I'm spreading it, and it's going to go through them. It's the Holy Spirit of God working through them, right? And so, and so that, he is their pastor. That is their church, some of these kids, and that's all they know. And we were, actually, he was teaching me how to serve. He's one of the, I need a team of teachers. Uh, it was just a high-maintenance kind of brother. Matter of fact, the surfboard they gave me was like as big as a stage, and uh, my whole family was on it at one time. But... <laughs> We were down at the beach uh, doing uh, surf lessons, and these kids are walking by, and, and they're just talking to them. They have no idea who I am, and not that that means anything, but the, he's their pastor, and that's their church. That's all they know. And so we have a, he has an idea that I want you all to get involved in, because especially you all who like the beach and want to surf or boogie board or, or just like to be by the ocean, that you can partner with him to, to reach all the people on the beach Tell them about your, well, your three-step plan. Okay. Well, you know, surf ministry, we have, we have three different ministries we kind of do. We have the Tuesday youth group we do, and that's just mostly youth and stuff. Secondly, I have um, a, an outreach that we do. I don't know if you guys have heard of Bobby Ducharme. He's actually, I think he's here. Sitting right over there in the wheelchair. He's right over there. He broke his neck years ago surfing at Coronado Beach. And uh, we did a documentary on him here. My best friend, Brian Jennings, works at Walking on Water. Now, he was wanted to end it. Can you imagine surfing? He was going to be pro. He was getting good. He wanted to end his life. And his mom called me, will you take him to church? It's like, it's, it's, it's bad. And I said, if he wants to go, I'll bring him. I brought him to the Rock Church. Miles gave the message. He's got one hand he can use. Miles said, you want Jesus Christ? You come forward. One hand. He wills forward. Gave his life to Christ that night. Changed his life. So this, this is in the bookstore. We do outreaches as well. We've spoken to thousands of people the last uh, two years, and his mom just told me we have well over 100 commitments for Christ through that. So Amen. look at tragedy and look at what Jesus Christ can do through that. And thirdly, uh, this is where you guys get involved. I have a vision from a friend at, at Horizon, and I want to continue that, is this. The beaches from IB to Oceanside, about 13 beaches, raise up Bible studies every Saturday, 945, Okay. And you can surf before or after. You don't have to surf. You can just sit at the beach, whatever, beach lifestyle. 
You guys get involved leading this thing that when Jesus Christ looks down, every 